Hello, this is the presentation on the value of network communications and telehealth. While this presentation focuses on telehealth, you are welcome to tailor your research on any industry you prefer. Network communications is the background, backbone of uh, telehealth or any modern industry. To facilitate the implementation of, on a ranged network, an understanding of standards, protocols, and secure communications is necessary. A great deal of telehealth or any industry will be conducted with the assistance of video conferencing. We will review some of the options available. I think video conferencing is to take into another level, especially in telehealth. The development of telehealth equipment and sensors for remote monitoring of patients is dynamic and, and increasing daily. Interoperability of those devices can only be achieved through standards-based development. The importance of standards. We'll get on this in, in a bit. We'll also differentiate the difference between connection-oriented and connection-less communications protocols. The OSI model was developed by the International Organization for Standardization in uh, 1984, standardized the functions of data communications by grouping data communications in terms of logical layers. We will explore the, these later, uh, layers later, later. And it is also imperative that we secure our data communications. Uh, HIPAA security rules require network security and, and, and encryption. And we'll also uh, list some benefits uh, derived from telemedicine. What are standards? Why are they important? Standards establish norms, procedures, and requirements, and conventions. Why are they important? For interoperability, to develop a technology with industry support. Standards are established norms, conventions, or requirements to make sure that a specific level of care or interoperability is agreed upon through an industry. For example, clinical standards of care, technical standards, operating procedures, etc. Technical standards are required to make sure that equipment and applications can be understood and utilized by multiple dissimilar systems with the same result, especially from different companies. The physical exchange of information over a network can happen in different ways. In a circuit switched uh, network, before communication can occur between two de uh, devices, a circuit is established between them. Once set up, all uh, the communication between these devices take place over this completed circuit, even though there are any other possible ways the data could conceivably be passed over the network uh, devices between them. The classic example of a uh, circuit switch network is the telephone system. When you call someone and they answer, you establish a circuit connection and can pass data between you in a steady stream. In a packet switch system, uh, no specific packet is used for data transfer. Instead, the data is chopped up into small pieces called packets and sent over the network. The packets can be routed, uh, combined, or fragmented as required to get them to their eventual destination. On the receiving end, the process is reversed. The data is read from the packets and reassembled into the form of the original data. The packets where the error is detected have to be reset. And the different routes can be used uh, depending on dense traffic. So some of the information can go through the satellite, some could be going across microwaves, and others could be going across hard wire. This is similar to uh, mailing a jigsaw puzzle piece by piece to a friend. Connection-oriented packet switching protocols include X.25, frame relay, multi-protocol label switching, and uh, transmission control pin, uh, protocol, like in TCP IP for the Internet. So connection-oriented and connection-less uh, protocol. The logic of information over a network can happen in different ways. The connection-oriented protocols require that a logical connection be established between two devices before transferring data, accomplished by a specific a set of rules that specify how a connection should be initiated, negotiated, managed, and eventually terminated. One device in initiates by sending a request to open a connection, and the other side responds. 
they pass control information to determine if and how the connection should be set up. The data is sent between the two devices. When they are finished, the connection is broken. Connectionless protocols do not establish a connection between the devices. As soon as a device has data to send to another, it just sends it. This is called the UDP. That's the connectionless protocol. Best effort delivery used for streaming video and audio. TCP, on the other hand, would like a certified return receipt requested letter, like a requested letter, and UDP would be like junk mail. This is the OSI levels from layer 1 to layer 7. This one will give you a little bit of a shortcut on each of the individual ones. The physical layers are is mostly concerned with the data, zeros and ones. The data link layer has the MAC address or the, uh, the specific number that's on every a LAN card that's on each of the uh, computers, or it could be on a printer that is connected to the network. The network layer is the packet routing uh, using the IP addresses or, or, the, or the TCP IP, uh, the logical protocols. Then you have the transport, the session, the presentation, and the application layers. You may want to take a moment to go through all the layers. Data moves from one computer through the layers across the physical media and up the layers to the receiving computer's application. The layers can be remembered by, with acronym, uh, all people seem to need data processing from the physical layer to the application layer. To bring the architecture to, uh, to something you might be able to relate to, look at this chart. This is the architecture for Android phones. Do you see the similarity between this and the OSI model for networks? The application layer is usually developed in Java. The layers below that basically support what is created here with functions, libraries, and other support material. The framework does this, the application framework. This helps to keep the phone chips as cool as possible, like using the ARM ch chips instead of the, the CISC uh, uh, AMD or the uh, Intel chips. And uh, the ARM processors are usually RISC or reduced instruction uh, processors. When the top layer is done in Java, the libraries are programmed in C. The, the bottom level connection to the uh, baseband is the Linux kernel layer. Linux is another f uh, programming la language similar to Unix. Some other words of interest here. Daemon is what is working in the background, and uh, Dalvik VM, or the virtual machine, is uh, Google's Android operating system. It is the software that runs the apps on the Android devices. For those of you who are computer science majors or technically oriented, you may want to look onto this side and make a comparison between the, uh, the network layers and uh, the Android layers. Name some ways that you can secure or protect a computer. You may want to pause and think about this. So some of these things are the antivirus software, firewall, authentication, access controls, and backups. Backup data daily uh, back, uh, and, and keep backups in a secure area. Access control, uh, like you, uh, limit user account access to only what is necessary to perform your job. Utilization of login authentication should be with complex passwords. A firewall to protect the network from exterior threats. This can be done inside the uh, router. The use of antivirus software on all computers and servers. We have gone over that in class. But at the very end, don't forget to protect the computer from outside forces like power surges and lightning with a high-quality surge protector. To go over HIPAA, the uh, links are also listed on, on your homework sheet, but 
The HIPAA pro privacy rule protects all individually identifiable uh, health information held or transmitted by a covered entity or its business associate in any form or media, whether electronic, paper, or oral. The privacy rule calls this information uh, protected health information, or the PHI. And there are some other rules that requires its in encryption. And these uh, links are also listed in your uh, uh, paper sheet within your homework area. Some other words that you should think about, telehealth, mHealth. mHealth is basically uh, mobile health. Mobile devices are increasing in popularity in healthcare with smartphones and tablet technologies, and distance in healthcare communications are no longer an issue. Medical equipment is being designed with telehealth standards in mind. Video conferencing is, is beyond just having a, a meeting. It can assist in rural clinics and add in uh, collaboration of specialists with, with clinicians, uh, with, especially with the proper equipment. If you'd like to go uh, look at this one, this is also included on your list. Uh, it'll show you how you can be using uh, uh, telephoto lenses or whatever it takes to be able to examine a, a, a patient like you are in the same room. Video conferencing, mobile video stations. Since there are many manufacturers of video conferencing technologies, they are not always interoperable, and this is a problem. When selecting one, it is best to stick with common standards to be sure that your device can talk with other devices. Avoid uh, proprietary devices or software. Do your homework before you can make, make or suggest a purchase. Again, these are the equipments that can uh, make a video conference session into uh, something more precise to be able to do any, uh, any kind of an ex examination. Again, it is important to verify standards and, and ensure interoperability. Some of the other equipments that are possible. And according to Informa Information Week Healthcare, remote patient monitoring will double by uh, 2016. Efforts to reduce costs in healthcare and avoid emergency room overcrowding and prepare for a growing number of elderly patients in the years to come are a few of the drivers for the adoption of these remote systems. What is M Health? Uh, you may want to look at this uh, video also that is listed on your homework area as a reference. The integration of uh, network communications, telehealth, and the development of standards will greatly improve our healthcare system. Some people with uh, chronic illness may have difficulty getting to ongoing treatment appointments. Maybe they live in a rural area or their treatment requires uh, frequent monitoring. The advancements in medicine are worthless if the patients who need it can get to it. So we can use the technology to make treatment more accessible to those who need it. These are the questions for re review and I'd like for you to answer them in your paper. Okay. What is the OSI model? Okay, that's the standardization model that was developed in 1984 by the International Organization for Standards. Name the seven layers of the OSI model. Review this tape. What is the difference between connection-oriented and connection-less protocols? So the big difference is how does a UDP operate and how does a TCP operate? Give an example of how telehealth can decrease costs. Transportation cost, efficiency of service, pre-screening to detect minor medical symptoms. And give an example of how telehealth can increase access to health services. We could be developing tel uh, telespecialists, rural, uh, rural patients, low-income clinic uh, access to state-of-the-art treatment data. Thank you.